Get on your boats, it's time to return to Doom Island. Yeah, Doom Island was the Godzilla toy line from the late 1990s by Trendmasters, and it was only about half released in retail. Although the unreleased stuff has made it into the world through an online contest by Trendmasters themselves, through dead stock being discovered and sold from Taiwan, and through collecting circles. This is my second video on the Doom Island toy line. I did the first one a few years back, but since then, I've got a whole lot of new items to share, so let's set sail. Godzilla, bursting through time to claim the raw power of Doom Island. Godzilla, Doom Island action figures, each sold separately from Trendmasters. Before we dive into this video, I need to talk to you about one of my sponsors, Bespoke Post. They're a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. Every month, they introduce their members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home, kitchen goods, clothing, and more, even live oysters. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. I've said before that it's free to join, you can skip a month, and you can cancel any time. What happens is you take a preference quiz on their website, and every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but costs you only a fraction of the value. You can preview boxes before they're shipped out, so you can decide then if you want to keep it, swap it, or just skip the month and get charged nothing. Bespoke wanted to send me some more items to showcase, so first I'll show you my excellent headlamp, Beam! 150 meter range and 600 lumen maximum luminosity. Great for nighttime hiking, but I like it for nighttime photography. Now I can set up my camera hands-free when I'm setting up a long exposure on the stars. And this is the parked camp chair. Looks small, but in no time at all, it's an astonishingly comfortable chair. You might have noticed that I've already highlighted this chair in a previous video. Well, I loved it so much, I wanted a second one. Now I can lounge anywhere in the world with a friend. I wish Bespoke Post could send me a friend. New subscribers get 20% off their first box of awesome. Just click the link in this video's description and enter Monsters20 at checkout, or go to bespokepost.com slash monsters20. Thank you, Bespoke Post, for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. In my last video, I showed you some of the standard size Doom Island figures on card, but I've since opened them, and I'll get to why in a bit. First, I want to show you the 6-inch Godzilla. And if you compare him to this Godzilla from the previous Trendmasters toy line, you can see a real improvement in color. I love this deep green. It feels like it's ripped from the pages of a comic book. And while Doom Island Godzilla doesn't roar, hitting the button here makes his eyes light up all hellish red. Doom Island Godzilla is ferocious. And here's the same mold, but this is the supercharged variant. Throughout its entire time making Godzilla toys, Trendmasters would release standard green versions of Godzilla, and then these black versions that they considered supercharged. I really like the silvers and blues used on his dorsal plates. And he too has light-up eyes. Okay, so there's Doom Island Godzilla off its card, and here come Megalon and Baragon. These molds debuted earlier in the Godzilla Wars toy line, along with Varan, but for Doom Island, they got a new paint job. Here you can compare Megalons with the Doom Island version on the right. And here's your comparison of Baragons. Can you believe this is Baragon? So one issue these Doom Island toys have as they get older is a sort of a paint sweat. Figures with this black paint actually sweat over time. You can even see it in how shiny the black looks here. Touching it, certain spots feel sticky. When I had Baragon on card, droplets of black were beginning to form in the card's bubble. So rather than slowly watch it get ruined over the years, I opted to open these toys up and enjoy them. As I mentioned in the last video, there are also repainted Varan and Space Godzillas out there that I do not currently have. In the last video, I showed you this battle armor Kumanga figure. It's Kumanga, but with all this intense armor, you could snap onto him. And missiles he can fire. Missiles, because Trendmasters. Well, since my last video, I've also acquired the battle armor Angiris. Have you ever seen Angiris look this intense? He has a full-blown tank on his back. Why? Why? Of course it's got firing missiles, 
because Trend Masters. This Angiris figure is awesome. I love how you can hunch him down like he's crawling on all fours, yet his buff arms can go upward. But there are two downsides with this figure. Once again, we're dealing with some black paint sweat. My guy is super sticky in some spots. And unlike Kumanga, when you take the armor off Angiris, he doesn't look quite right. He looks kind of cringy, actually. It's just all sorts of wrong. Here he is next to his Trendmaster's 4-inch counterpart. And here they are together, the two new battle armor characters, Kumanga and Angiris, ready to blow up anything that gets in their way. As a reminder, this line also brought back the battle armor Godzilla and Mecha King Ghidorah from the previous line, Godzilla Wars. It's crazy how in Doom Island lore, some characters mutated and some got military upgrades. Moving on to the Dinosaur Packs, there were three. Dinosaur packs packaged and ready to go for Doom Island. And I've heard that these did hit shelves in some markets, like the UK. We've got Godzilla vs. Dinosaurs, Mecha Godzilla vs. Dinosaurs, and Mecha King Ghidorah vs. well, dinosaurs. These dinosaur combo packs are absolutely incredible. I'm gonna pop the figures out to show you, but I'll do it off camera as not to torture the collectors who don't like to open these things. The three monsters are the same molds as their Snap-on Armor releases in the Godzilla Wars line, but without the Snap-on Armor itself, some parts of the mold make less sense. For example, Mecha King Ghidorah has these holes here for the armor attachments it used to come with. Mecha Godzilla has the hole here for where the grappling hook thing used to go, stuff like that. There are adjustments to the paint jobs though, and in all cases, I'd call them improvements. As you can see, Mechagodzilla's metallic shimmer has been dulled down. He's given more of a textured look with some subtle black accents. Same goes for the metallic parts on Mecha King Ghidorah, and his bright gold skin has also been given some dark accents and a more aged appearance. Supercharged Godzilla is gray with many black outlines, and even though mine is fresh stock, he's got some sort of booger coloring going down the dorsal plates here. Maybe it's old glue. But let's check out these Trendmasters dinosaurs! Here's the T-Rex, and honestly, I can't stand him. No, seriously, this toy is awesome, I just can't physically stand him. The balance is just all off with this figure, he doesn't stand at all. But aside from that, he's awesome. His jaw can manually open and close. There's a surprising amount of articulation in his arms, legs, neck, and his tail, they all twist. A lot of screws at the bottom. Five! Not ideal, but it's cool to have a Godzilla fight a T-Rex. Stegosaurus looks like he just crawled out of a clown hell, and I'm here for it. His tail can strike like so. His dorsal plate looks like it was meant to be a switch, maybe to control the tail, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Stego's four legs and head can twist too. This pterodactyl also doesn't stand, and I can already feel the dinosaur nerds telling me this is a pteranodon in the comments. Like any of these molds are even close to accurate. His legs and head twist and his jaw has some movement, be it very little. If you have all three dino packs, then you have four of these orange raptors. And there were two different raptor molds, with different tail and head positioning. Heads, arms, tails, and legs once again twist, and this leg seems to have a little spring in it, unlike the other leg, like it's meant to kick. And that is your Trendmaster's Dinosaur Collection. Like I said in the last video, you're never gonna mix these up with normal dinosaur toys. These are Trendmasters through and through. As I said at the top of the video, a lot of the Doom Island toys in circulation right now are coming from dead stock discovered in Taiwan and sold on eBay. And every once in a while, they offer the large figures. These are the guys with light sensor activation. They roar, they light up, they're badass. There was a Space Godzilla, and here you can see the differences between the Doom Island Space Godzilla and the previous one from Godzilla Wars. There's Biollante, and then we have two Godzillas, the standard green one and the supercharged one. Now, as far as I know, the supercharged Godzilla was only confirmed to exist in the wild very recently, as it was obtained by a collecting friend of mine, Paul Shockley. 
Paul has the most incredible Doom Island collection I've seen, with everything I showed you still in their cards and boxes. And now he's got the ultimate unicorn, the large supercharged Godzilla. Amazing. As you can see, these were only released in boxes labeled Godzilla. In my last video, I showed you my 6-inch Mega Mutation Destoroya, and my large Mega Mutation Godzilla. Here they are again. Paul has all four of these guys, both the large and small Mega Mutations of each character, so we could see what they look like in their different scales here. What a collection! Thank you for sharing these pics, Paul. And there's one more thing to show you today that is absolutely extraordinary. In my last video, I mentioned this convention photo, which reveals a Kamakaris in this line, and I showed you early production art of both Kamakaris and Manda. Well, back in 2014, Paul had commissioned 3D models of these characters based on this concept art. And then a few years ago, he finally had them printed by Etsy seller Sidtropolis. And I nabbed my own for my collection as well, and here they are. And they are simply put, near perfect. A bit delicate, the horns of Manda break off quite easily, but otherwise these are a fantastic addition to a Doom Island collection. A look at the world of what almost was, the Doom Island, Kamakaris, and Manda that might have been. Unlike the animated series line from Trendmasters, which was downright cancelled, the Doom Island line has slowly gotten out there into the world, and it's taken decades to even fully understand which toys made it to some form of production. It has become the stuff of toy collector legend. If you'd like to discuss Trendmasters collectibles, including Doom Island or the other Godzilla lines or any Trendmasters releases, there's a new Facebook group called Trendmasters Collectors, where you can hop in, share your memories, share your collection, and have discussions with other collectors. It was through this group that I was able to purchase my Dino Combo Packs, direct from former Trendmasters employee and artist, Jeff Bergeron, and his lovely wife Stephanie. Thank you guys so much for the hookup. I hope you enjoyed our trip back to Doom Island today. Share your thoughts below. Until next time.